We got a good harrowing story today. Good. All right, let's let's go. Let's go. Well. let's go. Let's go. Okay, I'm, let's I'm go. Going. Let's I'm go. Going. Oh, we've been recording for 30 seconds. You motherfucker. Yeah. <laughs> this is how I get sort of the natural banter. <laughs> you, 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 you get the drop on us. You're like a fucking, uh, like an ambush predator, but for the yeah. bits that go in. I love to things. get flashbanged by my own podcast. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Justin stacking, a stack of one stacking up on the door of the podcast. <laughs> yes. Alice, you still have that FBI open up. Uh, drop. Oh god, I do, but it's so loud. Like, it's the kind of thing that just like, uh, uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling through like 1500 drops. FBI, open up! Yeah, that's how Justin starts every episode. Yeah, I start the episode, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Just like CS gas coming in through the windows. Time to podcast, motherfuckers. (laughs) (laughs) No! I'll, I'll comply, I'll comply, god damn. Roll in and instantly shoot the dog. Um, yeah. And then, uh, yeah. yeah. It's, it, we podcast with speed, surprise, and violence of action, you know, yes. and we take all of those very seriously. Our, our, our chief weapon is surprise, surprise and fear. <laughs> you rely so on the, the overlap between fear. the Spanish Inquisition and SWAT teams, yeah, yeah. stronger than it might appear, and yeah, just, uh, just they don't have the nice red uniforms. Is the thing. yeah? I, I would, I would think a, a like a red SWAT team uniform would kind of pop off, like a sort oh, of cardinal SWAT team. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, I yeah. guess that's what the Musketeers yeah. were for Risha. Yeah. Also, yeah. the uh, the the the, uh, the red coats they had the whole they're called yeah the red coats. yeah yeah. Can you imagine, a, like, a, a, an 18th century, like, uh, redcoat SWAT team? I mean, here's the thing, right? Americans will constantly, like, hype up the Revolutionary War to the point that I once saw a multicam tactical with, like, a uh, hookside Velcro for patches, tricorn hat, looked like absolute shit. And yet, when you try- Unbelievably <laughs> into it. <laughs> <laughs> and yet, when you try and, like, tacticalify the Redcoats, all of a sudden no one's interested, and I think that's a real sort of asymmetry. Oh, yeah. Anyway, you just get, like, a regular, like, boonie hat, and you just, like, sew it up in, like, three corners. It's easy to do. Yeah. They just change your life there, Liam. I don't- uh, uh, yeah, I- well, so here's the thing, right, is that I- I, uh, am gonna go cosplay the Revolutionary War now. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right, cool. Are you are you gonna be like a Hessian or what's 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 no, your class no, I here? Would, I would rather be dead than German. Um, <laughs> whatever. Yeah. I'll be you the have poorly, that on a bumper sticker. Poorly, poorly organized state militia, mm. and then I'll get a three percenter thing and put it on the back of my truck, and then I'll record YouTube videos from <laughs> my truck. You could go and do a whiskey rebellion. I before, before I, we I, totally lose their attention, yeah. I got to say one hey, what's thing, up, guys. <laughs> you, subscribe to the YouTube channel. I mean, subscribe yeah, to the Patreon too, but subscribe to the YouTube channel because we are three thousand something subscribers away from getting a plaque with our names on it that yeah. we can keep really in our right. houses and show to our parents when they accuse us of never having amounted to anything. Yes, uh, remember. Okay, so here's the thing: with smash that, that subscribe button mm-hmm, and hit mm-hmm. that bell and the uh, like button. That's right. I, my yeah. parents tell me every time they see me how cool they think this podcast is. Oh, it's very well, sweet. There you go. Yeah, I. Uh, we love we love a supportive family, don't we, folks? I, I have mom and dad, and any of my mom and dad's friends listening, and now say all the curse words in order. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> George Collins, twelve words you can't say on television. That's right. That's right. Going straight through the devil's dictionary. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm going to relate to Ambrose Bierce a lot better in a couple of weeks when the episode that gets us all killed is out. Oh, uh, yeah, we got to I mean, record the episode that gets us all killed. Ambrose Bierce wrote a famous short story about a bridge, and this is another bridge. It's oh. an Creek, um, right? Yeah. Useful segue. Yes. Um, so this is the big Bayou Canoe Bridge. Oh, it looks in bad. Alabama. You may notice that it's broken. Mm. And also, there's broken train all around it. I, I can tell it's the south because the water is sort of like uh, the color of antifreeze and also visibly about three inches deep. Yes, yes, but n- despite that, one locomotive is poking halfway out of the ground over here. That's um, mud, I assume. Yeah. Like, yes. yeah, and this is like choked with various invasive grasses, mm-hmm. industrial waste runoff. Possibly uh, also gators. Y- yeah, yeah gators. exactly. Once gators again, love industrial runoff. Don't fuck with gators. I don't like them. It just makes them stronger. I I fear and respect alligators, as yeah, we've made clear. It's like a big mm. scaly dog. 
It's, um, it's, a, it's a shitty it's, thing that uh, it's an animal it, it's that's like, like another animal. Yes, <laughs> yeah. fucking brilliant, brilliant work there, Steve Irwin. The, the <laughs> only, the only like uh, semiotically cool right wing thing is that Florida crocodile flag that's like let us alone with the cool crocodile. You know, it's a shame they don't deserve it. I also like the. Uh, I, I regret to inform you, I really like the an appeal to heaven flag, mm. uh, but I'm not allowed to like that one anymore because the fucking yeah. weebs have taken it. I know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this M track train should not be like this. Um, no today we're going to talk can't about park there. <laughs> yeah, can't park there. Today we're going to talk about the big Bayou Cano uh, rail accident of 1993. Hmm. First, we have to do the goddamn news. Uh, we got so much news. Yeah, we have a lot of news today. Uh, is this what's what's Oh, there's just a, bru- a loose latex glove in this photo. Yeah, yeah. right at the bottom. Awesome. Lots yeah, of yeah, other yeah. trash in this yeah. photo. So the, the, well, the, whole, the whole, yeah, it's New York, the whole place is trash. Well, good <laughs> thing that they can just leave the, the, the one guy on Twitter who was like, you're an idiot for thinking people should just, for thinking people should use the dumpsters. That's that's why you use dumpsters, so you don't have literally floating trash here. New York City has once again been destroyed. It's been for destroyed like by rain. The yeah. fifth time we've counted. Uh, it, eventually, we will get to like all the plagues of Egypt will have descended upon I, New I York was, City. I was about to say, what's next on the list? Locusts. I think locusts. Yeah, and then One boils. One giant frog. Yeah. Yes. Uh, yeah, one really fr- big frog. <laughs> Eric Adams is gonna like make the like heart hands with the frog. He's gonna fist bump the frog. I actually don't know what Eric Adams is gonna say about this because he hasn't said shit. Like, uh, I, don't, d- I don't think there's 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 no floods in the plagues. It's just turning the water to blood. That's the closest thing. Uh, well, I mean, turning the water to poop water is still pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, but so Eric Adams has not said anything about this, which is sort of unusual, as I understand it. Like most people just woke up to you know water, uh, and his press team are on Twitter saying. Actually, you're doing like microaggressions against me because we put out a press release at like 11:40 at night the night before, saying, uh, "Hey guys, this is very water, bye." bye. Yeah. So yeah, there's going to be a bit of water. Hope you don't have a basement apartment. <laughs> yeah, it was a travel <laughs> advisory, and yeah. I think this oh, is maybe beautiful. above the level of a travel advisory. My favorite thing that I've seen, aside from this guy here trying to trying to mop uh, the street while the NYPD drive past him. Is I've seen people trying to descend into flooded subway stations as if they can catch a train in the flooded subway station. Why would you do that? Don't do. In that. fairness, the subway probably is still running. Um, I think. Right, I think I it's running. One, it yeah, may one not be. Se- one second. The, I think, the, I think they, they put like a really big, like tank-style snorkel on all of the cars. Well, they have a big vacuum train for this situation and a couple big pump trains. No, no, they've suspended service. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> Under the sea, join me. Twenty thousand leagues beneath Fifth Avenue. Come yeah, join me I mean... in the water subway, Mister Bond. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like Thunderball down there. You know, they've got the guys with the spear guns. Just fifty, yeah. fifty like NYPD transit bureau guys all milling around on their phones, but they're wearing full scuba gear. I'm just, I don't know how flooded, flooded it is. You know, that this is sort of my, the way I've been reacting to the news all day is like, okay, this seems to be confined largely to a few neighborhoods. This is not mm. like an extensive flood that has shut down the city. Yeah, I mean, apart uh, from having destroyed hey, it. The A and the C are still going, baby. Yeah. Oh, well, I feel go. like if, if, if you go to a subway station and the water is like coming up the stairs, you don't shouldn't to have to do. Station. Yeah, you shouldn't have to do like a sort of a Chernobyl basement dive sort of uh, thing. There shouldn't be a uh, sump involved in you getting into the subway. Submarine station. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, big rainstorm. Uh, urban infrastructure not able to cope. Mm-hmm. Granted, I think if you wanted to do something so it would be able to cope, you'd be building just some insane floodwater tunnels that would take you know fifty years to finish. Um, and by the time they were finished, they'd be obsolete because of climate change. So what are yeah. you going to do? <laughs> Aren't they building like massive breakwaters that are also not going to do anything? Well, they've been saying they're going to do it. Yeah. Oh, that's almost as good. Yeah, that's 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 about all you can expect. Days, <laughs> we're investing you know? fifty billion dollars into this guy with his mop, with his yeah, street we're, mop. We're, we're putting also, we're putting uh, the entire uh, capital budget into um, this guy who's going to say we'll get around to it. <laughs> we're getting around to it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I, I can't wait to see what Eric Adams says after the fact, given that before the fact he said nothing. I can't robot wait to see- Robot cop, it's gonna save us all, or whatever. Yeah, yeah the robot cop is gonna be defeated by like three feet of water, yeah, which this I, looks to be. It's, it's yeah. like uh, the fucking Marty robot and the giant that I, every time I, I lock eyes with it, I just want to tip it over and run. Uh, yeah. I fucking yeah. hate that thing. Well, we, we know how the cop robot does with water because the last time I saw one was in San Francisco many years ago, uh, like almost 10 years ago, I think, uh, where it just drowned itself. It, it, it sort of fl <laughs> it flung it itself, itself into the sea. Yes. Yeah, into a fountain. That was in Georgetown. Was it? Or has this yes. happened multiple times? Did they just yearn for death? Yeah, I think so. I robot think they, they, they are not stressed. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that was yeah, that was what security robot in critical condition after nearly <laughs> drowning on the drop. Yeah, 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 like died on the table after eight hours of surgery. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> I had to give it a full funeral, like when a cop, <laughs> the like, you know, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, the, yeah same, the same, the same. It, it's it, it the End same way watch. when a when a yeah when a when a canine officer dies in the line of duty because it was left in a hot car. <laughs> oh, tragically died in the line of duty. Yeah, yeah. Buckle up, one. Buckle up, folks. It's gonna get real. Yeah. Real uncomfortable for all of us. Mm. Yeah. So, um, New York City uh, has been once again rendered uninhabitable. Yep. Where Philly gets skipped by the fun weather every single time. Th this it, is it's... just like John Boyce's 1770-76. This is crazy. It's How does this keep little, happening? It's a little crowded and humid, uh, uh, clouded up and humid out there, but otherwise Philly is fine. I'm unhappy we're going to have all these refugees, but what are you going to do? Yeah, I mean, you know, open your oh, arms you and mean, welcome New them into a kind of like uh, accommodating culture that yeah, boosts tell me your you economy. Mean just New Yorkers, yeah. Roz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just like clipping that out of isolation to make it seem like sort of like anti-immigrant sentiment. You went to the border with Elon Musk the other day. That hat oh, yeah. looks so goddamn dumb. <laughs> In other news. Hey, if Diane only, Feinstein died. If only this had happened while we were recording, we could have had another RBG moment. Yeah, I, I don't know because that's it's not funny in the same way, mm. you know. Because the way the, when Ruth Bader Ginsburg died, it was like, uh, oh my God, we're incredibly screwed, and that's really funny, um, <laughs> you know. That's no, like we're uh, we were already incredibly screwed. Now we're just like, Ugh, yeah, yeah, this yeah. doesn't really. I don't feel like it changes anything. It changed, Diane Feinstein she was the she death. was the tiebreaker on the Senate Judiciary Committee. Mm. Which, right. I mean, a lot of good she was able to do with that. Like, one of the sort of big, right. uh, like, uh, our nation should be in mourning posts was uh, someone posted a photo of her, like, leaning over LBJ style. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Or, or yes. anime style, depending on how you want to look at these things. Um, leaning over Lisa Murkowski. No, Susan Collins. Um, to no, be it was like Lisa Murkowski. Ah, uh, whatever. One of the two sort of like fucking waverers to be like you got to vote against Kavanaugh, and obviously that worked, and that you know because Kavanaugh's not a Supreme Court justice. Well, I, right, I guess yeah. to her loan of small credit, Lisa Murkowski didn't vote for him. She did the job she set out to do. Yeah, I she, she she got pressed against a wall by an older woman, and you know had and, the desired effect. Yeah, uh, yes. yeah. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, so I'm, I'm trying to think. What, what's your? I've I've been mulling this all day since I heard the news. What's your favorite um, Diane Feinstein moment? Because I think uh, my favorite Diane Feinstein oh, moment. Oh, the Confederate flag in San Francisco is objective. Yeah. Oh, that's that's strong. That's a strong answer. Uh, yeah. The, 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 I was also thinking of the Confederate flag, and then I forget. I forget all the stuff she did to the gays. Yeah, um, a bunch I of stuff. She, she was, was like a big fan of Dan White. Uh, she she inexplicably tried to get the USS Missouri uh, home ported in San Francisco. Uh, sh she uh, like uh, maybe fucked Roger Moore in order to get the permits for filming View to a Kill in San Francisco. Oh. Uh, my favorite, yeah, listen to Kill James Bond, uh, <laughs> the episode on View to a Kill for some more details on that. My favorite Diane Feinstein moment. Is sort of a tie, right, between uh, the time when a bunch of adorable, precious, precocious children 
highly motivated to save our planet from the sunshine movement came to her office and were oh, like, yes. can you do something about the climate? And she was like, no, listen, you little no. shits, I know what I'm doing. And then immediately got dementia and then died. That's one. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's a good one. That's, that's a good one. That's the, a good the, one. Uh, the other one is when she like sabotaged the police investigation into the Night Stalker, Richard Ramirez, by disclosing a bunch of details that the police didn't want her to disclose on like live TV, and therefore handing them directly to Richard Ramirez, which led to him like hucking his extremely distinctive shoes off the Golden Gate Bridge uh, and closing down an entire line of inquiry. Awesome. Yeah, Amazing. she was so cool. Uh, you know, a nation mourns. Yeah, I, I, I from, from, from what I remember, you know, always, always excelled at doing her job of of being weird and out to lunch. Yeah, weird and off putting. Like, yeah, weird and off putting. Yeah, um, <laughs> it's what you got to do to survive in San Francisco. Mm. Um, and now not seemingly. Yeah, it's and now not. Yeah, so. R.I.P. to lady who should have retired earlier. Yeah, I mean, she, she, she kind of, it, it's this fraught position where she was like basically elder abused, but also kind of deserved it. <laughs> wow, like, what a yeah. sentence! <laughs> same, same situation that happened in like most German old people's homes at the end of the 20th century, you know, where it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, okay, it's just not great, but you kind of had it coming. <laughs> You heard it here, folks. Uh, Alice Caldwell Killy believes Diane Feinstein Killy, was, yes. That's was right. a Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, listen, if you don't want me to call you a Nazi, just don't fly the Confederate flag off a public building. Yeah, yeah. that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> In other news... Uh, jarring shift in tone for the back half of the news. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, Azerbaijan is taking over the sort of internal separatist uh, republic full of Armenians. Yeah, Nagorno-Karabakh. Yes. Um, so, uh, Azerbaijan, by the way, uh, repeated uh, war criminal, uh, ethnic cleanser, genocide, genocide uh, yeah. like, yeah. terrible on human rights, both internally and externally, yeah. but strategic NATO ally. So, um, you know, well they're done, our guys. Well done, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Big round of applause for the oil guys. We love, uh, we love petrodollar. Guys. We love, uh, yeah, we love that shit. Because uh, Armenia is in the sort of like really unfavorable position of being nominally a Russian ally, but the Russians both can't and won't intervene at all. They don't give a shit. Yeah, they they don't they don't seem to be super interested. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, because um, yeah. Russians love to be like racist against people who were like formerly in the USSR. And so uh, essentially what happened is after they invaded uh, Ukraine, a bunch of the sort of like uh, younger Russians who did not want to fight in Ukraine just kind of got dumped into Armenia as a kind of like daycare situation. Right. Um, and and so now everything in Armenia costs like uh like fifty thousand dollars because it's you know being bought by uh like Russian fail sons who everyone hates, um but also they will not lift a finger about any of this because you know they're tied up in Ukraine and also they don't want to so there's there's Russian peacekeeping forces there that are peacekeeping but ultimately what we're seeing is uh like this mass displacement this mass ethnic cleansing of Armenians into Armenia, out of Nagorno-Karabakh, which is just being Azerbaijanified. You know, they're taking down all the signs, uh, renaming all the towns, uh, and it's it's real bad, and uh, no one seems to give too much of a shit. Yeah, no, no one seems to, uh, no one seems to want to do anything about this, considering yeah, I, I think... The State you know, Department I, has been pretty embarrassing on this. Mm -hmm. You know, you start, you sort of look at it, and you're like, "Well, there, 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 there's objectively someone in the wrong here. Can we do something?" No, not no. going to do that. <laughs> no, of course not. And I mean, we'll be lucky if it ends here, because uh, Azerbaijan's sort of like uh, anti-Armenian rhetoric and posturing, and then you know, actions leading oh, yeah. up to war uh, extend way beyond the Gono Karabakh, and right, they like. Wherever this leads, it's not going to be good. And Armenia has sort of like very little in the way of like 
uh, any ability to defend itself from a much more aggressive neighbor, which again is like is our guys, like the our allies, nominally. Right. Take over Armenia, and then they take over Georgia, and then they then they go steamroll right into Iran. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that that tweet from a, uh, like a couple of years ago that said that a USSR two was brewing was right. It was just well, it uh, turns they, out they it's just it it's Russia. Azerbaijan. Yeah, no, no USSR two capital Baku. Oh, yeah, dear. it all started when they got the Grand Prix. That was a bad decision. Sure. Yeah, g- genuinely. Like, uh, so, I mean, we sports, sports washed washing. the fuck out of it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. MBS is not stopping his sports washing either, uh, as nope. he has said. Still doing the Saudi Pro League and stuff? Oh, yeah. Yep. Um, So, yeah, that's bad. Uh, Mm. Bad to do more Armenian genocides. Yeah, Uh, you you would uh, think. Was was the one not enough for you? (laughs) In other news. Uh, now this this one I have not been following too closely. Yeah, so basically, what happened was a guy named Idi Irizarry was shot in his car by uh, a cop, a now former Philly cop named uh, Mark Dial. Mm. Uh, they a couple of days ago uh, dismissed the murder charges against him. Uh, thankfully, they refiled charges. Uh, we've had some unrest in Philly. I have the same speaker this guy in the hat has. Uh, cool. <laughs> yeah right. Yeah, didn't uh, didn't didn't he like perjure himself or like a bunch of cops perjured themselves about what was on the body cam footage? Uh, it came out pretty quick. Uh, I I he got charged with murder. Uh, I'm not sure that there was. We have seen the body cam footage. Basically, he runs at him, says, "Put your fucking hands up, I'll fucking kill you," uh, and then proceeds to shoot. Proceeds to do just yeah. that. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all Philly cops are bastards. All cops are bastards. Uh, Mark Dial's a cold-blooded murderer. Uh, like I said, they have refiled the murder charges, uh, and cops get what they deserve. That is my opinion on this. And Idi Irizarry didn't need to die. Uh, did not need to be executed uh, for no fucking reason. Uh, right. Yeah, it's fucking grotesque. And uh, that judge, whose name is escaping me right now, should be ad- deeply ashamed. Judge Wendy L. Pugh. There we go, Wendy Pugh, yeah. Uh, so basically, uh, I will... Yeah, we haven't done... Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the what the plan is vis-a-vis like protests and stuff. Obviously, there's been some protests and some looting, uh, because obviously, uh, you know, what's more important than... Uh, and a, a person dying, uh, being ec- nakedly executed in the streets of Philadelphia is uh, iPhones, obviously. Yeah, someone, someone getting an iPhone. Yeah, uh, so I, I'm not too mad that uh, Lululemon got robbed, sorry. <laughs> the, the sanctity of Lululemon. The West truly has fallen. But yeah. Uh, what even is Lululemon? They, they sell like yoga pants. Uh, oh, they're, they're like cancelled for some abstruse reason I don't remember. Like right. it, it's something Founders really. a lunatic from what yeah, I remember. It, yeah, it's like some really deep shit. It's like it, it's Racist like hobby Japanese lobby people, maybe. Yeah, it's it's, it's 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 like they, they I I don't know. They're all made in like Israeli settlements using child labor or something. I don't know. I don't remember what it is, but it's like it, it's bad, but it's weird. Bad is the deal with Lululemon. Right. Okay. <laughs> that's that's my vibe update on the yoga <laughs> pants place. Is like, yeah, it's, it's it's something going on there, but I don't remember what. So yeah, w- w- once again, uh, police uh, just murder people arbitrarily and get away with it. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. How does this keep happening? Says, um, yeah, only nation. Yeah, yeah. There's no no way to prevent regularly this. Regularly happens. Yeah, I mean, it's not not only nation where this regularly happens, I was but about like to say, seemingly well, uh, the French had the had the decency to burn half their country down. Yeah, yeah. Seemingly only country where this happens as much as it does. Yeah, that was the goddamn news. Jarring shows the tone. As I was okay. Saying. All right, let's try and recover our tone here. Give out some nice trains. All right, yeah. Tell me about the southern. Those are some nice trains. Yeah. So, uh, I guess this is where we start is to talk about the Southern Pacific's Sunset Limited, and later Amtrak's Sunset Limited. Right. So this is 
So the Southern Pacific is was the Southern Transcontinental Railroad. It's why we had the Gadsden Purchase and all that sort of stuff. Um, you know, it it it, it ran from uh, Los Angeles east, right? Sort of through the desert mm. uh, and through Texas San and Diego, stuff, yeah. getting owned as we previously covered. Uh, yes. One of their premier trains, which inaugurated in 1894, was the Sunset Limited, which went from New Orleans to Los Angeles and later up to San Francisco. Hmm. I like um, a, I like a named train. You hardly ever get them now. At least, oh, yeah. it's well, a good one called the Cannonball, which was an LIRR named train. Ooh, it's still called the Cannonball. Oh, I thought they got rid of the named service. I do not believe so. Okay. You, the thing is, you can't get a, a meaningfully named service in this country anymore. Like, they'll slap a nameplate on it, and they'll be like, yeah, this is like the Flying Scotsman or whatever. It won't be on the board, because that's still by time. And it's like, well, put a little extra line on there, you know? Uh, Give me some flair. Yeah, you know, it used to be like when all the Amtrak Northeast Regionals had names, like the Senator or the, oh, the yeah. Night Owl. The Clocker! The, the Night Owl! Yeah. Fuck, that's cool. Yeah. The Fast Mail, etc. Mm. Um, yeah. So, you know, this goes uh, New Orleans to San Francisco via Houston, San Antonio, El Paso, Phoenix, and Los Angeles. And, you know, I had sort of the standard story for American passenger rail um, becomes this ridiculous luxury train sort of in, you know, the 30s through the 40s starts to decline in the 50s. Some of that was genuine loss, loss of ridership. Some of that was because the railroad just didn't want to handle passengers. I'm thinking um, about the kind of like ultimate level decadence you would have to be like, yeah, I'm going to get on a train in Los Angeles and like vacation in New Orleans. I'm going to oh, be drinking yes. the whole way. Yes. <laughs> oh, that's the dream, baby. That is mm. the fucking dream. So this is one of the trains that was uh, incorporated into the Amtrak system in 1974 when Amtrak took over all the passenger trains, right? Um, and 1993, they decided, well, we're missing some service along the Gulf Coast here in sort of the Florida panhandle, right? What if we extend this train all the way to Miami? Ooh. And that made it the first actually transcontinental train to run in the United States. What, they uh, never ran like one that was like fully transcontinental before? No, you always changed in Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> big, big Chicago putting its thumb on the scale for like yes. 200 years. Oh yeah. So, you know, now it was, it was a very long train, San Francisco to Miami. Uh, they gave it these nice new Superliner cars that Amtrak bought in uh, the 80s, I want to say. Mm. Um you know, and this was, they essentially, they combined it with a previous Louisville and Nashville, Nashville train called the Gulf Wind. That is not uh, such a good name. Uh, that was <laughs> no, the New Orleans, kinda... that's the New Orleans to Miami segment. Mm. Um, Again, a train a of like, train. massive decadence. Oh yeah. Oh, I would never be sober on that train. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. Yeah. That's, that's sort of the I think it's a crime to be sober thing, on that know? train, actually. Mm. I mean, listen, no one ever got killed by like, drunk passengering, especially on a train. Yeah, I was about to say, you know, yeah, it's tell a that similar to the, vibes tell to like that. Uh, uh, conductor who made Roz not drink his beer on the Northeast Regional for some fucking reason. Yeah, it's they don't like mess. it on a they don't like it on a Richmond Regional. Um, so this was trinicated to Orlando in 1997. Then uh, after Hurricane Katrina hit New Orleans, they just decided. Uh, we'll get rid of the entire Gulf Coast segment again. It'll be back to the original one. Yeah, we're, we're gonna do. We are, we're doing the Katrina episode. Yeah, the thing about doing the Katrina episode is that it's gonna be seventeen hours long, uh, yeah. and we're gonna it, it's gonna have to require each of us doing like a doctoral thesis worth of research yeah. because, like, I, I mean, part of it is just you can intuit from this map a little bit that like this whole segment of the country just did not recover, like, right. yeah, fully. Right. I mean, there's yeah. parts I've been to New Orleans several times uh, since Katrina, obviously, and there are parts that are still like abandoned. I guess you'd use the word yeah. just abandoned. I mean, recognizing my own ignorance when I when I said that the the Libya had the first city to be destroyed by climate change in recent memory, it's not true. New Orleans was like, I, I mean, yeah. they've done their best to rebuild it, but yeah, there. You know, I've been on tours where they're just like, yeah, like just no one came and helped, and mm -hmm. they basically just left us to die. Oh yeah, you see a lot of houses that still have tarps on the roof, although I assume those have been from more recent hurricanes than Katrina, by and large. 
Yeah, well, the horror cast did not stop. The Katrina you know. episode is coming. Stop emailing me about definitely, it. Definitely, yeah. definitely parts of the city that recovered better than other parts. Yeah, I yeah, still don't have a true. public school system. Um, it's all, it's yeah, all I, I, I think the other thing is we're trying to finesse the ability to do like a, a comedy podcast that allow about Katrina that allows us to go to New Orleans without getting like Sazerac thrown in our faces. Getting, getting, getting. Uh, yeah, that would be bad. That would be bad. On the other yeah, hand, I want I want a Sazerac thrown in my face, but like the mouth, you know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I, would, I would prefer not to be marched through the streets, a la Muammar Gaddafi. <laughs> this is this train is theoretically being restored sometime in the near future. I know they do want to run a New Orleans to Mobile train, uh, but on the new Amtrak expansion maps, this is always confusingly labeled "service suspended." As though it's still going to be suspended after all this investment. I don't understand that. <laughs> Just um, one train. It's like a really long dinky. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so this is another. This is also one of the two, three times a week trains on the Amtrak network. Um, the other one being the uh, Cardinal. Um, another so, cool name. Yeah. So um, anyway, it's that's the sunset one of these, like, E3s with a little like Cardinal's Beretta on the top of it. So now we got to talk about Mobile, Alabama, and the Mobile River. Oh boy! So the port of Mobile is a pretty big port, and uh, you know, on the Gulf Coast, um, you know, you, it's they're not... testing the limits of my knowledge here. My knowledge of the of the port of Mobile is they sent the uh, like BPD's surveillance van there one time in season two of The Wire. Huh. I don't know very much about Mobile. Um, you know, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's not, not a, we're Northerners and we're sorry. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, actually Roz isn't, it's the worst thing. Roz is from the <laughs> well, south you, of the Mason Dixon I, I, line. I am, I am from Virginia. Yes. Um, Virginians taking Alabamans for granted. I mean, impossible. You know, this is the last time this happened was, uh, don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't. I mean, listen. I, I think it's fine if you tell them to fix bayonets and charge up hill into the guns. You know. Yeah. Hey, so, that's my state, baby, Pennsylvania. <laughs> so Mobile is an important port, not just for ocean-going vessels, but for river, uh, river boats, uh, barges, so on and so forth. Right. Mm. Um, this is on account of you know where where you're. <laughs> just the dumbest fucking joke in my head but yeah. <laughs> born justin rosniak he adopted the nickname mark twain from riverboat <laughs> slang yes <laughs> <laughs> so um you know this uh the mobile river eventually becomes the tom Begee river um that was big for shipping traffic for a while but it didn't get really big until they built something that will cause certain people to to just start fuming uh, about wasteful government investment which is the Ooh. tennessee tom Begee waterway um, which linked the Tombagee River with the Tennessee River, and thus into the the Mississippi River system as a whole, right? Yeah, I mean, this is like one of the most engineered river systems, like in the world, right? The whole like lower Mississippi. Yeah, I mean, you know, other than like some of those big shipping rivers in Europe, like the Danube, uh, okay. you know. Do this shit is, to the uh, Danube. They barely like scraped all the like Nazi skulls out of it. Like, leave them. I, well, I, this is very artificial, re artificial reef, but made um, out of Nazi skulls and in a river. I think it's been straightened a bunch of times too. I'm uh, sure you're right. Mississippi has also been straightened a number of times, and yeah, you know, those are hard, like, hard it just to hold reverts. in place. Yeah, you can't, uh, you can't uh, do conversion therapy. Conversion doesn't work. Therapy, ah, you beat me to the joke. Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> so Ross quits in know, protest. There's a lot of. <laughs> After this, after this uh, canal is opened in the 1980s, there's a lot more barge traffic, right? It becomes much busier. Um, you know, you got, they're shipping cargo like wood, wood products, petroleum products, coal, all this stuff that's like steel, you know, cheap and durable enough to travel for weeks by barge. And then it goes into the port of Mobile. And if it's destined for somewhere farther out, like, uh, it goes onto a bigger boat and goes out in the Gulf and into the ocean, right? Mm. Uh, you know, to wherever they want to go. And another thing they have here is they got a really big railroad terminal, uh, you know, A, serving the port. B, there's a, a car float that goes from Mobile to Coetzacoalcos, which I'm sure I pronounced wrong, 
and we're gonna have to talk a lot about we'll talk about it a lot more in an upcoming episode so yeah I, yeah mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh that's that's another episode <laughs> yeah um, yes it is and this is all on you know sort of a delta right oh the um, fbi are coming for you Liam. yeah oh, that's, that's no, him. That, that's that was me. me yeah no oh. um so well, you you're know. probably not wrong, honestly. Like if, mm. if I get executed by the FBI, just keep going. Mm. Yeah. So all of this is like a big swamp, right? Um, um, yeah. So, yeah. I mean, yes. it, it, look at all that beautiful brown uh, on the satellite, and and plus oh, yeah. the sort of like turquoise felt tip marker kind of color. Oh yeah. Yeah, you get the whole, mm. a whole. Uh, the whole the right side of the terrifying phrase riverfront industrial area i don't yes. like that yeah that's <laughs> su- Paludi's mega factory yes yeah and there's a town called pennsylvania oh don't go there <laughs> wait there's a town called bromley fuck yeah. me that's that's uh, i don't i that's one of the places i least want to go in the world after bromley london is bromley Bro- alabama bromley alabama yeah yeah um, the glades so there's a lot of swamps and there's a lot of bayous, right? Mm, which is French for swamp. Yes. Um, <laughs> but in general, when you, you talk about bayous um, in this context, they're sort of open channels within the swamp. Some are big enough for barge traffic, some are not. Um, some could be made big enough for barge traffic, but uh, are if not you, like, necessarily. you dredged them, you know. Yeah, if you dredge them... Um, they used to do a lot of logging in the swamp, so you'd go and you'd actually dredge new channels into the swamp so you could get at the trees. Um, you know, that's why if you look at like uh, southern Louisiana and places like that, you see a lot of these inexplicable straight channels that go nowhere. Um, a lot of that's oh. old logging operations. Oh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. I never knew that. No, so either. the one that was natural was the Big Bayou Canoe. Are you a big bio can or a big bio cano? Yes. Um, so we'll get to that in a second, though, because I probably should have put this slide one further. Anyway, when you're navigating barges on the Mississippi River system, right, uh, usually you have several of these big barges that are standardized size, and you just sort of lash them together, and you get a big tugboat, and you push them. That's, right? That looks a bit... Preca- like you don't have any uh, anything at the front. It's all steered and powered at the back. What are you gonna hit? I have alligator, uh, uh, alligator, uh, yeah, Floridian but, and an airboat. Uh, yeah, the, uh, the alligator's smart enough to get out of the way. The Floridian, I don't know. No, the Floridian uh, c- c- against Confederate ground, soldier sir. skulls. I don't <laughs> yeah. like a b- bunch of Andrew Jackson's old canes. I don't know, like. Yeah. I know my rights. I know my rights as I'm being <laughs> by a gator. <laughs> you're, you're you're not going very fast. You know, there's a lot of time to react. Um, you know, you, 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 these things take you know weeks and weeks to go very short distances. But because yeah, you, you can become a great American man of letters in the course of driving one of these. Exactly. Um, so you know, this is uh, but it's 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 very good for like really big bulky cargo, like you know coal or stuff like that, right? As long as it's something that doesn't go bad. Mm. Um, now, so navigation on this river system used to be very difficult, and then sort of in the later 1800s, they started installing systems to uh, make it easier, like lighting. The whole Mississippi River was lit up for a long time. I don't think it is anymore, because um, we invented radar, um, uh. and that makes it very easy to navigate, uh, even in very difficult conditions. Um, you know, so it used to be how you'd difficult have to, like, do the conditions get? Is my question. Um, not very for a barge. Say, yeah, it looks like pretty flat. Pretty yeah, it's slow. like pretty flat, pretty slow. Um, if you're in a flood, that, that would be pretty bad. But then you're probably just gonna go tie the barges off somewhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> not Oak my problem. Homes and not yeah. go through New York. Right? Yeah, rather than yeah, rather than Take rather than BQE, a, right, right, right. accidentally deliver the barge directly downtown. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Try to back up in Times Square with your barge. Yeah. 
I've seen the day yeah, after but tomorrow. The worst stuff the worst stuff you can get is, you know, really heavy fog or um you know, or it's just pitch black out. But again, you have radar now, so that's not as big of a problem. And a lot of times, even if there is very heavy fog, what do you do? You go over to the side of the river with your barges and you throw a rope around a tree and you wait for the weather to improve. I was hoping you were gonna say like epic tactical barge captain like no. four tube night vision no. goggles. Just, just pull it over. I mean, back in the day, though, what this used to be was you had a guy with a like a stick, right? The proverbial barge pole, uh, yeah. and you just kind of like Dots. felt ahead for stuff. Park by uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you would just stop when it got dark, or it was foggy. Mm. Yeah. Cool. It, ultimately, that was like the, the the main thing you did. Um. Now, in the delta of the Mobile River, though, there's um. There are some navigational issues, that being there's a lot of extra channels and bayous. It's easy to get lost or take a wrong turn if you aren't experienced in navigating the river. Oh, you are doing the like three-point turn in a bayou or whatever, you know, just backing yeah. the thing up, backing the thing up again. Mm -hmm. So here's the, the main channel of the Mobile <laughs> River is here. I like this image. Right? Oh, yeah. It looks, it looks very um, vascular. Is that the word I'm looking for? Looks like, yeah. you know, like, uh, low, yeah. low, like a little network vessels. of capillaries and all that. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the big bayou canoe branches off here. Are you a big and bayou? It goes canoe? around and over and over and around and then back up. And well, up that really is a big bayou, bayou yeah. canoe. Yeah, goddamn. Yes. And then you notice a straight line here. This was the Louisville and Nashville Railroad, which is now owned by CSX. And I assume um, in horrific shape. And, uh, uh, it is currently. It wasn't at the time. Uh, yeah, because th this is now like a lost technology, maintaining a railroad through uh, yeah, like yeah. a swamp. I mean, just trying to trying to do really basic uh, maintenance. Well, I, I, I don't know if CSX is telling the truth about all of this stuff. No. The condition of the railroad down Why there. Why would they, they don't be? Want, they don't want Amtrak to come back. Um <laughs> But they say it's not in good shape, I believe. Um, Considering the stuff that they say is in good shape, that's not an, like a ringing endorsement. you know. So, this bayou was never navigable, but for whatever reason, when the Louisville and Nashville rebuilt the bridge in 1909, they built this bridge which had a truss section, then it had, at the other end, it had a timber trestle, and in the middle... They built this steel girder bridge with a central support because they wanted to eventually convert it into a swing bridge, you know, so it can rotate out of the way so a tugboat can get past, right? Just in case someone, like, straightens it. Yeah, in case someone straightens the channel, they want to do right. some logging back there. There's some other reason to bring stuff. I don't know exactly why Force they thought tablet. they might need it. Just yeah, think it's but, cool. Yeah, but they thought they might need it, right? Yeah. So what this means is you built the bridge which is not very resistant to shear forces, like a force that acts on it from the side, because it's designed to rotate, right? Sure. That's, that's fine. I mean, you don't get any wind or shit down there. Like or it's, hurricanes. Yeah, it's not, yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, it's, it's heavy enough that a hurricane's not going to do much to it. Oh, okay. Um, unless it's like, I don't know, category like the bean. Where it's just <laughs> going to be fucked no matter what. Sure. Yeah, exactly. Something that's going to level the entire county. Um <laughs> We did it, Patrick. We saved the bridge. Yeah. And this bridge was in use basically forever. And at the time of our story, it is 1993. It's, it's owned by CSX. Amtrak uses it. It's in pretty good shape. This is pretty good track. It was 70 mile an hour track at the time. Wow. Again, I don't know what the state of it is now. Yeah, just um, blasting through a swamp at 70 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. Well, it's oh, yeah. very straight and very flat. Um, you know, once you built that good embankment, you can basically, you know, it, you can go anywhere you want. Um, it's like a controlled environment. Yeah. Cool. So maybe we'll have a, a briefer here on railroad signaling systems and how track is done so that you're allowed these sorts of speeds, right? Um, I think most of our <laughs> listeners have a basic understanding of railroad signals. Yeah, yeah um, green means go. Green red means stop. Go, red yellow means, means stop. stop a bit a bit. Um, yeah. th this guy down here on the bottom right is like, fuck this railroad and has just set a bunch of it on fire, which yeah. I think is rude. Yeah. Um, so the way railroad signals work is, yeah, they, they give you directions how to operate the train. Do you go? Do you stop? 
you go slower do you, do you stop and proceed do you, all kinds of stuff right and you divide um, the rail up into blocks if the block has a train in it or the thing doesn't work then the block start, can yeah. only have one train in it at right. a time right. yeah. yes so how does the signal know what aspect to display I, aspect being the color I, I i mean back in the day that it was like weights and like wires and shit and now i assume it's you could they go on the computer uh the signal codes are transmitted from signal to signal through the rails. That's fucking sick. Huh. Yeah. This so, I didn't know. Yeah, so this is how modern signals can not only, it, uh, you know, they, they can relay information to each other, but they also can detect based on the resistance whether a train is in the block or not. That's so cool. Yeah. So and I guess also if you just like uh, lost a bunch of track or something because it breaks the circuit yes so if if the track if the rails break the signal goes red that's um, smart it's a yeah it's a good thing it's it's fail safe yeah. um now another thing that was invented much more recently than than this sort of signaling system is something called continuous welded rail right mm. so the idea of continuous welded rail is that okay previously you had jointed rail right it came in i want to say 40 foot segments yeah and, we've talked uh, about this before when we were talking about like the the switch from like iron rails to steel rails and it's like the this is like the sort of technical like upper bound on how long you can make a rail section and have it still be like straight and strong oh yeah and uh we've been making up longer and longer um you know, your old fashioned jointed rail, you know, you had to join every 40 feet or so, and that's what gave the sure. train the clicky clack sound. Like a, and it was, right. you know, also, uh, you know, is, is a little rougher of a ride than what you can get with this new continuous welded rail, where the idea is it comes in in this quarter mile long segment that you just put on a bunch of flat cars strung together. And, uh, you know, then you lay it down in those quarter mile segments. And then you weld several of those segments together and you get an even longer rail. Sure. And then, you know, all of this gives you a very smooth ride, reduces wear on the rails, it reduces wear on the rolling stock, all that kinds of stuff, right? Yeah, but it takes away the cool noise. It does take away it the cool noise. The cool I'm noise. just I'm just realizing with horror that I haven't heard the cool noise in like like most of my life now. Well, there's still two places on the M Track system you can you can experience it, which is on the uh the Cardinal, uh, south of Charlottesville, where it goes on the Buckingham Branch Railroad, and on the Adirondack to Montreal, where once it crosses the border, it goes onto the worst track in North America. Sure um, does. <laughs> you know, it's dead straight all the way into Montreal, but it's still a 30 mile an hour speed limit. And it's, it's a rough 30 miles an hour. It's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it is. So yeah, we have we, uh, large sections of the American rail network have been converted to continuously welded rail. You know, it has a lot of advantages over jointed rail, just get a longer life. There are problems with expansion and contraction, but those are largely solved with, you know, expansion joints. And, you know, you, you can just engineer for expected temperatures and tolerances. And if you're having a really bad day and the rails are really trying to shrink on you, what you can do is set the track on fire. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Fuck this railroad. Exactly. And that'll usually give you a little leeway for the rail to expand more. Oh, yeah. um, <laughs> they like to do this in Chicago. Oh, a lot God. of that's for switches. But some of it is, uh, you know, rail expansion and contraction. I think this is cool. cool. I think this is a, a worthy Chicago tradition. Yes. Um, so, okay. We have all this in mind. We have barges. We have a railroad made of continuously welded rail through a swamp. It goes over a swing bridge with a continuously welded rail over it because the swing bridge doesn't need to swing. Sure. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Hi, it's Justin. Uh, so this is a commercial for the podcast that you're already listening to. Uh, people are annoyed by these, so let me get to the point. We have this thing called Patreon, right? The deal is you give us two bucks a month, and we give you an extra episode once a month. 
Uh, sometimes it's a little inconsistent, but, you know, it's two bucks. You get what you pay for. Um, it also gets you our full back catalog of bonus episodes, so you can learn about exciting topics like guns, pickup trucks, or pickup trucks with guns on them. The money we raise through Patreon goes to making sure that the only ad you hear on this podcast is this one. Anyway, that's something to consider if you have two bucks to spare each month. Uh, join at patreon.com forward slash WTYP pod. Do it if you want. Or don't. It's your decision, and we respect that. Back to the show. All right. So on September 21st, 1993. Uh, I was about to say, this seems like idiot proof. Like, I I know what we're here for. Guess what? Don't worry. (laughs) Mm. Also, we're here, so how could it be idiot proof? Yeah, yeah. So, Willie C. Odom. Oh, what a name. Yeah, I know. He was piloting a barge, uh, or a tugboat, called the MV Malville. Or Malvilla. There are going to be Alan Bowman's writing in to say that you are giving every single word here about five too many syllables for them. I, I imagine so, yeah. yeah. Uh, um, this was owned by Warrior and Gulf Navigation Company. Oh, boy. He was going upstream. Cool yeah. yeah. He was going upstream on the Mobile River with six barges. Mobile. Mobile. Goddamn. Mobile. Excuse yeah, be, me. Be respectful. Mobile. <laughs> the mobile oh, river. The, the mobile, mobile river. river. Yes. Yeah. It says the waving mobile around river. There. Yeah. So it was very late and there was a fog rolling in as he started to pass Twelve Mile Island, which is this guy here. The cousin right? of Three Mile Island. Yes. Mm. Yeah, it's actually four three mile islands. I yeah, well, I was just calling them cousins, Ross. You know. <laughs> yeah, it's four times larger cousin. Yeah. Uh. So other crews had radioed in. And he heard that, okay, upstream, this fog is a shutout, right? There's no visibility. So Odom decided to do the smart thing. He's going to moor the tugboat in barges to a tree. So he and a deckhand spent about 15 minutes trying to find a suitable tree. And they fail miserably at it. They don't find the tree. They can't find any tree. Because they can't, because blackout fog, not black. Blackout fog, and they can't find a good tree to moor to. You know, because you can't just use any tree. You need a pretty good tree. Right. The, um, the sort of long tail consequences of deforestation. Uh, exactly. So now during that 15 minutes they spent doing that, he's been distracted and has not really been navigating. Right? Whoa. Cool. Yeah. But, I mean, it's a slow boat. Like, it's, yeah, it's fine. Very slow, probably. yeah. Now, Odom had also never had formal training in the use of radar. He had learned it on the job. <laughs> okay. Oh. Yeah. That's okay. that's not a great mix of like subject matter and sort of like yeah, way I you feel come like, to the right. Yeah. Radar is one of those things you would sort of be like, oh, okay, like we're gonna at least sit you down for a few minutes. And be like, yeah. This is how radar it would be like a homegrown radar operation. Yeah. You know, like... Well, worse, the Malvella had a new model of radar he hadn't previously used. Cool. Oh, okay. The company also had neglected to provide him with a compass. What? That seems like too much cost cutting. He had furthermore left his river charts at home that day. Uh, now you're just, now you're just uh, fucking yeah, up. You're fucking, whatever, dude. <laughs> That's sort of like I was, I was so, mostly on this guy's side. Like, yeah. I, I, you know how we hate to blame it on like an individual, and particularly a worker, and then I'm, I'm listening to this, and I'm like, for fuck's sake. Dude, yeah, come right. on, come on, dude. You, you can buy a compass, even. They don't cost a lot of money. Like, you, <sighs> the biggest question is, where, where do you buy a compass? Like an outdoor store, like a like sure, a fucking Ali, Ali mountain. Baba. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I guess, Ross. <laughs> so, since he he did not find a good tree, he decided the course of action was to continue up the river about three miles oh. to where he knew for a fact there was a good tree that he could tie the he barges to. <laughs> yeah. What, just on, like, knowledge and belief? Like, Yeah, he'd, he'd been up there, up and down the river several cool. times. Okay. He's like, this is where the good tree is. <laughs> You know, it, 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 did it ever occur to anybody to like maybe professionalize this a little bit? No, no. It, it, okay. it, event. We'll get to that. Roll tide. <laughs> yeah. Roll. Yeah. 
Roll tide, roll. Now, so at this point, the fog is so thick, he can't see the front of the barges. Cool. And Odom has no idea that what he's done is at the end of 12 Mile Island, he had not continued down the river. He had turned into the big bayou canoe. Uh-oh. Uh, you missed your turning. Yeah. Uh, it looks like I took a wrong, the wrong turn in Albuquerque. It's just like going <laughs> to kill 40 people. So, it's about 2.45 in the morning. Someone's at the front door doorbell. Someone's at the front door doorbell. Someone's at the front door doorbell. <laughs> very, very compelling phrase. Yeah. I don't know who. Oh, just the FBI. Yeah, probably. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll see you guys later. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, pleasure. Yeah. Well, I mean, it was, it was nice knowing him. Yeah. Uh, FBI, open up! Oh, ah! <laughs>What if we just tie our barges to his barges? Smart. He tries to, he tries to co contact them on the radio. He gets no response. And he's like, ah, we'll just do it anyway. So he's slowly plodding up to this unknown tow. And, uh, thunk. Yeah, no big problem. I mean, they got, yeah. like, old tires over the side and shit. It's like, yeah, exactly. It's fine if you do a little a thunk. It's a barge. It's full it's of, like, barge. coal or whatever. What are you going to oh, do? Yeah, you going like, to dent the coal? Yeah, exactly. It's not, not going to... You're not going to damage the coal. Um, <laughs> um, now, once again, okay, he thinks he's more. He's 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 got a what? got something to more to here, right? Hmm. Um, but what the Malvilla actually thunked into was not a another uh, barge tow, right? It was the big Bayou Canoe Railroad Bridge. And so this, for a couple of minutes, he was trying to call a bridge on the radio. He was trying to call a bridge on the radio. That's like yeah. the old joke about the fucking like lighthouse, about the lighthouse and the navy ship. Yeah, yeah. So since he struck the girder section that was designed to eventually be a swing bridge, uh -oh. he swung the whole thing out about three feet. He made right? it into a swing bridge. He caused it to swing, yes. Unilaterally, like What's a guerrilla urbanist, he like yeah. made the thing a swing bridge. So this was enough of a swing to throw the, the girder directly into the path of the railroad, but uh -oh. not enough to break the rails. Ooh, twisty rail. Yeah, exactly. The rail is like the line is like fouled, but it's yeah. not broken. But it's not broken, it so you don't have out. the and it's, automatic and it's, indication. In heavy fog. Right. Yes. In the middle oh. of the night. Yeah, buddy. Now, while this was happening, train number two, the eastbound Sunset Limited, was just leaving Mobile. Because like many Amtrak trains, it has very convenient departure times in major cities. <laughs> like like 2.45 in the morning. <laughs> um... Once leaving Mobile, you have this long, flat, straight section of track, quickly reach the maximum authorized speed of 70 miles an hour. There had been a 30-minute delay owing to a problem with a toilet at Mobile. Uh -huh. Gross. But this is also a three-day long train, so, you know, whatever, 30 minutes, eh, we'll make that back up. Mm. I would say that, but never made it. So, Yeah. Odom is, uh, you know, he, he's, he's trying to, you know, get something to tie on to here, and he can't quite do it. Um, about eight minutes after he heard the thunk, he hears, the, hears this whooshing noise. And then suddenly there seemed to be some kind of fire on the bank. Uh-oh. Right? And he, like, manages to maneuver the barges away from whatever he thunked into, and while he's doing that, uh, he loses one of them. This is uh, genuinely just, the most <laughs> clueless motherfucker we've yeah. ever spoken about. It just this whole thing happens, and he's like oblivious to he it. He has no no idea what's going on. 
I don't know. I don't know. I just want to. I just want to stop the barges. I just want to go home. <laughs> and I very, very, like task oriented, very barge one the, one, focused. One of them is now just merrily drifting its way down the river, <laughs> out to the Gulf. <laughs> <laughs> well, the whooshing noise turned out to be eastbound train number two, the Sunset Limited. Whoops. After passing, yeah, after passing a clear Whoops. signal at the Bayou Sarah Bridge. Locomotive number 819, which is a brand new P40 DC. Uh, it's one of the, the stereotypical M-Track diesels you see yeah. everywhere. The same shape, at least, yeah. Yeah, first it, day on the job. Yeah, exactly. It crashed directly into the girder, climbed over it, and hurtled itself off the end of the bridge, which then collapsed. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it buried itself... 46 feet deep down in the mud. Oh, I hate uh, the Mississippi. I hate the swamps. <laughs> worse than the caves. I yeah. hate the swamps. Oh, the swamps are worse than the caves. Oh, yeah. no contest. Uh, three in engineers inside were killed instantly. Jesus. I hope so. I oh, mean, yeah. better than like d mud drowning, drowning mud. death. Yeah. 46 um, feet of mud. Well, it was, uh, I, the investigation said blunt force trauma and asphyxiation. No. Yeah, fuck exactly. That. Not good, not good. I like that. Ugh. Um, the other two locomotives behind it also went into the swamp, as did the baggage car, uh, the dormitory coach car, which has some seats and some crew quarters in it, uh, and two of the coaches behind it. Uh, so like coach thirty four zero six eight, which was the fourth car in the train. Went in the bayou, almost completely submerged in the water. Yeah. Yeah, you, you're just having a nice time on the thing. You've just gotten on the train at like two in the morning. Looking Next thing you know, thing. you're under like in the, in, infinity in mud. Glutinous yeah, mud. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, another coach was partially sub submerged. That was 34083. Um, that, that's the one that's like half sticking out of the water. Mm. Both of these flooded very quickly. Um, Especially if you're on the lower floor, uh, just instantly full of water. Mm. Yeah. Um, the remaining four cars of the train jolted to a halt on the bridge. Which is still pretty fucking precarious, given that the bridge is falling down, yes? Yes, one of them was partially off the end of the truss. Mm. Yeah. Like that. Um, all of this is happening, you gotta remember, this is the middle of the night, Dead lots night, of passengers right. are asleep either in the coaches or in the sleeping car, all of them suddenly jolted awake by this deceleration, right? There's no, but there's been no indication of any kind of emergency that was going to happen. You know, the engineer wasn't sounding a horn or did, did any emergency braking or anything like that. So it was up to the remaining crew to figure out what the hell was going on. Yeah, because no, the, no the one... engineer is just like, just driving along and then instant mud death. Instant right. mud death, yeah. And then, you know, the... um. You know, there's very heavy fog. It's the middle of the night. No one knows where they are. Right. The only people who would know where they were are buried in a locomotive. <laughs> You're having like a sort of like D-Day minus one paratrooper experience. Right. In yeah, you're just caught in a tree. Right. The yeah. worst Man, biome. Dick Winters is not coming to help you, though. <laughs> yeah. Uh, most of the crew was in coach dormitory. Uh, 3308, or 339908, which was one of the first cars to go in the bayou. Uh, this one suffered some structural damage, but it didn't actually, it wasn't really submerged, right? Yeah, so they're fine. No, because it was on fire. <laughs> which, which fucking Elmer Fudd on the barge sort of abstractly <laughs> notices? Yeah, yeah, so it, 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 what, one of the things that happens very quickly is that the fuel tanks for the locomotive rupture and they catch on fire, and now there's just flaming diesel mm. all around this wreck in the uh, in the swamp in the bayou. Cool. So if you if you evacuated from the sinking railroad cars, uh, if you were one of the lucky people who managed to, and quite a few people did, um, suddenly you were swimming in the bayou, surrounded by uh, a fiery oil slick. Also At least the gators. fire drives back the geysers, maybe. Yeah, I've seen that episode of Archer. 
Yeah. So it's about three in the morning. You're one of the two crew who are back in the diner. I wish you I got to figure out. I'll tell you that right yeah, now. <laughs> you got to figure out what you're going to do. Uh, you got to figure out what happened and you got to coordinate an evacuation. And they had a big issue, which is they didn't know where they were. Right. Um, it's, it's also whatever. Dead of night. Can't see. Yeah. Things are on fire. Yeah. And of this course, like the, uh, no God, cell the, phones. Uh, the Roro Ferry that yeah. went down in that. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. A Herald of Free Enterprise. No, yeah. I was thinking of Estonia. I wasn't on Herald of Free oh, Enterprise. Yeah. I was on vacation. Yeah. So the assistant conductor made a mayday call on the radio around 2.56. Because of the way the radio was working that day um, in this area, there's no like relay station, right? So it had to be relayed by the way, by way of a following CSX freight train who then radiated up Silbert Yard in Mobile. And they had to telephone the emergency services who then telephoned the Coast Guard whose number was wrong in the Mobile phone book. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So, so they, they couldn't get a hold of the Coast Guard for quite a while. It was a very slow process in the situation that was rapidly worsening. There's a lot of people in the water. The water was on fire. No one knew where they were. And, of course, there were gators. Hell yeah. Oh, no, you <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> <I, laughs> fuck, <but> why not? <laughs> every, everything's on fire. What? <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 you have nice friendly gators here to help you. I, I guess I guess this is sort of the yeah, situation. Nice like if you're in a restaurant gators. and yeah, you but... see someone <laughs> like getting delivered like table sides some like sizzling fajitas or something, and yeah, everyone exactly. goes like, "Ooh, that's same vibe, but for same you vibe know, for you the gators, gator, yeah." yeah. <laughs> it's like, ooh, interesting. So, uh, all right, how many people got eaten by gators? Actually, no one got eaten by gators. Yeah, the we gators were present, though. Yeah, that we know of. <laughs> they were this was a silent jury here. Yeah. So the, the captain of the Malvilla had woken up from the thunk and the whoosh. He took the helm from Willie Odom. He also called a mayday because he had lost one of the barges, again, now happily floating down the Mobile River. And he didn't know where he was. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> so... He radios the Coast Guard, and the Coast Guard established that the Coast Guard didn't know where he was, and he didn't know where he was, and they also didn't know where the train wreck was, which happened suspiciously soon afterwards, <laughs> but they did figure out that they were close to the train wreck. Uh, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I suppose that's technically true, isn't it? In a sort yes, of last but... person to see him alive sort of way. The barge knows where it is because it knows where it isn't. <laughs> um, so they decide to go help with the rescue effort for this accident they just caused. Um, the the Mount Villa was the first on the scene. Um, they they essentially they just cut the barges and beached them, and uh, you know then they came back to the scene of the accident. They pulled uh, about sixteen people out of the water including everyone who survived the wreck in the uh, crew dorm coach. Mm. Now, the Coast Guard was en route to the wrong bridge. Hell yeah, baby. <laughs> yeah, because they all thought it was the 14-mile bridge, which is a little farther up on actually on the river. Um, another tugboat showed up on the scene. This was the Scott Pride. They pulled 20 people out of the water, and it was about... 4 a.m. when the Coast Guard finally figured out they went to the wrong bridge, they turned around and Amazing. showed up. Amazing. And that was also when a fireboat finally showed up. Um, so in the meantime, the conductors and the onboard staff had coordinated a human chain in the water to help people to safety on the banks of the bayou. I'm sorry, did you say human chain? A yeah, human like chain. human centipede. Right. Yeah. No, I, mm, mm, I don't, I don't like that very much. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna <laughs> gotta go, gotta go haul people out of the gator infested waters that are also on fire. Um, right. Right. Yeah. Don't like that. So, everyone here is they're cold, they're wet, they're miserable. A lot of them are injured. Well, if you're cold, just of, go stand by the fire. Well, that's a good point. <laughs> um, well, by four a.m. Too deep, though. <laughs> when the mm. fireboat arrived, they got rid of the fire. Uh, yeah, and then that sort of you know makes your wet problem worse because yeah, exactly. one of, one of the primary ways of defeating fire is with wet. With wet, yes. With wet, yes. Um, 
you know, so uh, stuff was on fire. People were dead. It was a big mess. And they didn't, they still didn't really know where they were. He, he can't fuck around with fog. Like, yeah. we, we haven't done a sort of like fog based aviation disaster yet, but that's, there's so many of them. Oh, yeah. Until we had GPS, like reliable GPS, and you know, if Elon starts the fucking Kessler syndrome, it will be like this again. Uh, yeah, if, if there's fog, eh, I don't know. Guess, I guess. Good luck. Yeah. But eventually, everyone figures out they're not at the 14 mile bridge. They're not at the Bayou Sarah bridge. They're at no, the big the, Bayou Canoe bridge. They're on fire, right. Yeah. yeah. You gotta go to the fire. <laughs> Which led to this new fun problem How do they evacuate the injured passengers? Hospital train. Yes, that's what they wind Hell up having yeah. to do. Yeah. Put a put a couple of like blue lights on the top of another P four C. Yeah, because I think they just didn't have enough capacity on the tugboats, and so the tugboats went down river. It would have taken too long to send more boats up the river. Well, so they managed to get. Yeah, they managed to get a second train, all the way from New Orleans, which takes an agonizingly long time. Um, cause there's no road, um, the boats are slow, so, yeah, the only thing you can do is send another train. Um. Say literally sending in more trains. I'm sending yeah. in more trains, yeah. People had to have their wounds bandaged using scraps of tablecloth from the dining car. Oh. Um, wounds which, by the way, have been in this green-ass water. Yeah, exactly, They're, they've been, they've been contaminated with horrible swamp water filled with diesel. Um. <laughs> Yeah, and that was before the Amtrak hit it. Exactly. The last survivors didn't make it to a hospital or triage site until 8.30 in the morning. Oof, that's oh, yeah. a rough like, night. Like that's that. a long, long, long night, yeah. Like, it's not quite up there with, like, a plane dumping you onto a glacier or something, but, like, it's yeah. still... Unpleasant. That's, yeah, that's like yeah. a wilderness survival situation, you know? Exactly, exactly. You know, and it's like, okay, I mean, you know, the... the Obviously, there's no electricity in the train anymore, um, you know, so you can't really, there's no way to go to warm up or anything. Mm. It's just miserable. I mean, granted, okay, it's Alabama in se late September. It's not that cold, but it's certainly not warm. Yeah. Plus, you know what really makes you feel cold a lot more is uh, shock. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, all told, 47 people were dead and 111, 111 injured in this wreck. Jesus. Um, most of the dead were from drowning inside the submerged rail cars. Oh, there fuck weren't, that. There weren't too many serious injuries. This was sort of something where either you lived or you died. Mm. Um, mm -hmm. how, do we know how many people like uh, died waiting for rescue? Because that seems I, like a... I do not believe anyone died waiting for a rescue. Hey, that's, that's you know... I, I, yeah. it, Huge endorsement of uh, the Amtrak dining car tablecloth. There. Exactly, yeah. Um, they had a bunch of trouble accounting for everyone, though, since Amtrak didn't keep accurate records of who was on the train. So there's a bunch uh, the, of people... The, the pre-terrorism days, when you could just yeah. do fucking whatever, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They had a bunch of, bunch of infants with no tickets, and there were some passengers who boarded and intended to buy a ticket on the train. You know, they had some, um, like, Hindenburg-style stowaways. Yeah. You got a bunch of hobos on the back, you got a bunch of... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the hobo car, you know? Tr traditional hobo car, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, this accident was very bad, and of course the real question is, alright, who do you blame for this? I'm looking at one guy. I'm looking at one guy. Well, the NTSB actually looked at a lot more than one guy. Well, Ultimately, so. discovered something that now seems surprisingly obvious. Uh, the cause of the accident was the barges hit the bridge and knocked it out of alignment. That will do it, as it turns out. It took out. them a long time to figure that one out. Well, you really gotta, like, uh, cross the T's and dot the I's, you know? Yeah. And the NTSB, they went hard in on uh, Warrior and Gulf Navigation. The company hadn't provided proper training or adequate navigational equipment. But, no compass is a little much. Yeah. They also weren't required to. There was almost no federal oversight of river navigation. Amazing. It was, it was more, you know, tradition oriented. This is the way we've always done it. You yeah, know? the last guy to care about this stuff was Mark Twain. Exactly. 
um, the, the, the warrior and golf navigation simply thought, you know, folks are going to learn this on the job. That'll be fine. What's the worst that could happen? You know, mm, which this apparently, this apparently. Yeah. yeah. Um, no one person was blamed for the accident. No one saw criminal charges, but, uh, Willie Odom never piloted a tugboat again. That doesn't seem like enough consequence. Like, I'm not <laughs> usually like a send a guy to jail sort of woman, but like, it, it, uh, you lost your tugboat license, you and you're like, your, your right. burgeoning career is like a tugboat. It's like, <sighs> I think I think they didn't even take his license from him. He willingly surrendered it. Cool. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, also, NTSB recommended Mtrak make more safety announcements because people didn't know where the emergency exit windows were. Um, now they won't shut probably could have probably could have saved some lives that way. Yeah. Um, sort of emergency announcement that's like, by the way, you may be under <laughs> forty six feet of mud it, it, like with no warning. Right. Yeah, if so exactly. do do this. Do this. Open the window so the mud comes in faster. <laughs> <laughs> Try to eat as much of the mud as you can. Yeah, exactly. Uh, mud and gators. <sighs> Just tired. use a gator to dig yourself out. Hmm. Like a shovel. Like you know, you want to grab, yeah, yeah, grab the yeah, yeah, tail, yeah. grab the yeah, head. Like yeah. Sort of a Fred Flintstone thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a living. Yeah. Um, so eventually, Warrior Golf and Navigation uh, was fined $1.4 million. It's not a lot of money. For, not like, a lot of money, no. 47 for, people dead. Yeah. Like, 47 people dead. And that doesn't even cover one of the locomotives they destroyed. Yeah. Um, yeah. So Amtrak just ate shit on this one. Amtrak ate shit on this one, yeah. Right. CSX uh, ate shit on this one, because it was their bridge. It was their bridge, yeah. They fixed it very, very quickly, though. It was back up and good for traffic in like a week. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Because CSX they, needs its money. They yeah. can move fast when they want to. Right. Um, <laughs> of course. <laughs> the actual litigation here didn't conclude until something like 2016, and for some reason it was really hard to find information on it. I... I I tried. I couldn't really figure out exactly what the consequences were. Well, I mean, what what have we learned other than d d do not attempt to become like a self-taught radar operator? Yeah, uh, it's a good yeah. thing for uh, river pilots to have training and licensing. To know which river they're on, apart from running to the outside. To know what river you're on. Yeah, I, I, I think the thing is, right, if you lie on your CV, I, sometimes, a lot of times, that's not only moral but like basically consequence free, right? If you if you go for like a job as an email like job, a, right? Yeah. Well, I was thinking like if you if you go for a job as a waitress, right? And you're like, I am familiar with point of sale systems. I I have two years of experience doing this. And then they give you the job, and you rock up, and you go, "That was a lie. I don't. Please show me how to use this." They're gonna show you how to use the thing. It's gonna be okay. Like yeah. it, nobody's gonna die probably from you doing this. You you would have to work very hard to kill forty seven people with one of those like POS systems, right? But like yes. with the radar, kind of not so much, you know? Yeah, when you're piloting a massive heavy barge tow, um, that's a it's a good way to accidentally bump into things and cause real big problems. Now there's some questions as to if this bridge had not been designed as a swing bridge, would this accident have occurred? Uh, probably not to the same degree of severity, but who knows? Mm. Um, yeah, but you can't really fault them for building it that way because, you know, what if they needed to straighten the bayou, you know? I'd have to do some logging, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What if you wanted to, like, you know, hasten our inevitable demise at the hands go, of go anthropogenic climate change? Harvest some gators. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> cut, cut down some more trees so that uh, pilots have fewer places to tie their barges to. Yeah, I think that is the moral of the story, is you need bigger, stronger trees. Yeah. Bigger, stronger gators. Or, like, anchorages or something. Just install yeah. some, like, anchorages. Break yes. back the lighting, too, you know? Yeah. Why not? Yeah, May as well. Right. Meantime, I'm just imagining this guy being cashiered from like riverboat service. Like they like break his spurs and like snap his sword and stuff. <laughs> oh. 
Turn in your badge and gun. <laughs> your, I mean, it's Alabama. He may guns. well have both of those to do this. Yeah, like, this is true. Yeah. I like how they. Uh, th this is my favorite facet of American culture. Sometimes they'll just give you a badge for being friends with the cops. Like, oh, yeah. uh, who was the uh, D Herschel Walker? I want to say. Who just like was an honorary sheriff's deputy and like flashed the badge on stage of yes, the debate? Yes, was Herschel Walker. Nice. Yes. Yeah. Well. Anyway, that was the big Bayou Cano disaster. Mm, we have a segment it. on this podcast called Safety Third. Shake hands with danger. Hi, Roz, Alice, and yay, Liam. Yay, Liam. Nailed it. I only just came across your podcast this year and have thoroughly enjoyed the lengthy discussions you all have. Someone it's, gets it. Someone isn't yeah. bugging us to fucking get to the point in yeah. the first half hour of the show. At some point, I do need to. Wiki article. <laughs> at some point, I do need to sit down and actually look at the slides. Although it is very amusing being an audio-only listener. Yeah, I don't, I don't get you guys, but thank you, appreciate it. Lo log than... on to the YouTube once in a while and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Yeah, it's about to say it's better than listening to it at like four times speed or whatever the Zoomers do. Yeah, um, although there was one person who's been putting in like chapter markers on the the videos, and th that person yes. is a, a saint. Yes. I work in the mining industry, so naturally Ooh. I have several incidents to choose from that I've either experienced firsthand or heard second or third hand. Please see below for my potential contribution to the safety third section of your podcast. This particular incident occurred when I was working FIFO at an underground mine. That's fly in, fly out. Oh, it's a real back of beyond stuff then. Oh yeah. The mine used surveyors to map and scan slopes with a oh, drone. See, see, the, 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 claims to work in the mining industry can't even spell slopes. I mean, it's... <laughs> it's <laughs> uh, no, it's a stop. Uh, what is a stop? A step. That's in the next paragraph. <laughs> I, mine, I, I have been awake for so God long. God damn it. <laughs> mine used surveyors to map and scan slopes with a drone that had a scanner mounted to it worth Several hundred thousand Australian dollars. Okay, All right, so they're Australian. I'm not yeah. as impressed with the fly in, fly out stuff Dollar anymore. Days. Basically, anywhere in Australia, you have to fly in, For fly reference, out. Freedom Eagles. Yeah. A stope is a purposeful giant void, several stories tall, left behind from blowing up targeted ore. Ah, okay. So it's yeah. it, it, it's like a sort of uh, orosy. Yeah, you're, you're making a cave. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. That's what, is that what the kids are calling it, Roz? Yeah. There were a few surveyors right at this mine, <laughs> most of whom had decades of experience. One who was relatively new to the industry and quite young. The surveyor was undertaking the routine task of using the drone to scan the stope and had an even younger vacation student with them on this trip down. I don't know if vacation is the right word. I don't. I have no idea. Like what? Like a, the work experience kid. I guess so. Who is yeah. like, um, actually, I think it's called slope. Yeah. Yeah. They so, made so it to. <laughs> yeah. They made it to the correct heading and sent out the drone with the scanning equipment into the stope to start the scanning process. Now, some important context. A stope can be accessed through several different areas. See attached picture for simplified version. So safety controls are implemented to ensure you don't actually walk into the stope or drive into the stope when operating machinery in the area. Because then you'd fall and die. Oh, sure. uh, I see, because yeah. it's the big giant unmarked pit. I see. Yeah, exactly. It's it's huge, huge uh, Mario 64 endless pit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah sure. <laughs> okay, sure. I, I'm with yeah. you now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I got you. These safety controls differ across mines, but at the time, in at the time included, among other measures, a set of high-vis, lightweight plastic pipes suspended from the ceiling of the drive, uh, which is the access tunnel to the stope. Uh, these were known as dingle dangles. What? They would hit your... Australia is not yeah. real. Yeah, it sounds like oh, too much syllables. dingle dangles? It sounds like too much uh, syllables for Australian. Mm. You know? Oh, yeah, they can't like go a, more than two words without saying a slur about indigenous yeah, people. Yeah, it'll so. be like a, a dingy dangy, you know? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Want to go to Macca's and then do a hate crime? Yeah. <laughs> These would hit your vehicle and alert you to the fact that you're coming near to the edge of the stope. Mm. Back to the story. Some problems arose fairly quickly after the drone entered the stope. The remote controller for the drone, 
which had not been charged before they set out underground, started to get low on power. So it automatically recalled the drone, which was fine until it encountered the dingle dangles. The draft from the drone's propellers would cause the dingle dangles to move and flap around. Yeah, it would dingle the dangles. Yeah. Sensing a potential hazard, the drone would retreat back into the stope, then again attempt to return to the landing point, and once again encounter the dingle dangle hazard. Ironic. Trapped yeah. by the very safety measures it's uh, intended to be protected by. Yes. Well, cruel after, iron. after a few rounds of this, Surveyor realized the drone was not going to get past the dingle dangles and back to the safety of the drive. Our Surveyor decided that instead of letting the drone go crash into the stope when it eventually ran out of power, he would go past the dingle dangles himself, which is a big no, and attempt to catch the drone from underneath, which is an even bigger no-no. Uh, I'm so just going to do some like volunteer like platforming. Yeah, exactly. Then he could turn it off manually. Somehow, this part of the plan was successful, and he did indeed grab a hold of the drone, which was still turned on. <laughs> With a lasso or what? Like Jesus. <laughs> he brought it past the dingle dangles into the drive where he could try to turn it off. All right, we made it. He couldn't quite shut off the drone from the controller, and the off button for the drone was located on the top of the drone, surrounded on all four sides by heavy-duty spinning propellers. Okay, so I, I, I see why this, this is a bad idea, but also that's poor design, I feel. Yes. Yeah, it seems, like, it seems not very good. Upon realizing this, he decided instead of releasing the drone, he would instead reach up and over the blades to hit the off switch, as he was a tall man with long arms. <laughs> About to get shorter. While he was successful in doing this, the blades were also successful in slicing his body. Oh. The cuts from the blades started from the mid-chest and back up his arm and hand and claimed the t tip of his pinky finger. Ah, uh, man about to get killed by a drone and it isn't even armed. I was about to say. At this point, he was absolutely covered in blood, and the poor vacation student was standing there in shock. After hastily wrapping the remains of his shirt around him to slow the bleeding, they immediately started the process of getting back to the surface. I'll note here that driving underground is a skill, and it is set out like a rabbit's warren under there. An emergency would not be a great time to learn how to navigate out. Y yeah, it's a very yeah. aggressive driving test. Yeah. <laughs> so, dr driving instructor who like cuts off one of their fingers in the passenger seat to motivate you to be like, <laughs> yeah, you are going to get to the hospital as quickly as possible. Drive out of this hole. <laughs> yeah. Right. In mining, the correct emergency protocol is you would call emergency, 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 stay put, and the emergency response team would come to get, get you. However, panic had set in, and so a hasty radio call back to the surface had the surveyors on the surface coordinating with mind control to clear the decline of vehicles. Yeah. To clear the decline, is it, I think it might be decline in this case. I, I forget mining terms. Mm. Yeah. Australians would call it a decline, -o. Yeah, exactly. So, to clear it of vehicles so they could make a speedy exit right to the medical center on site. Being a remote site, the medical team patch him up as best they can and fly him off site a few hours later with a green whistle, which is pain relief. Some morphine syringe, yeah, isn't exactly. it? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <sighs> with the with the rest of the crew who were set to fly off site the same day. Luckily, his injuries weren't too severe, and he retained the use of his pinky finger. I believe the tip even grew back, and aside from some gnarly scars, he was mostly okay in the end. <sighs> Amazing. I mean. The system works, sort of. Is that what we're calling it now? Well, it, 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 it survived going off protocol. I was interested in yeah. the like, emergency response team. I was interested in like mining SWAT, you know? Yeah. After the incident, the drone policy was reviewed, and they added, among other things, a key step that the drone controller should be charged prior to using it. And then you should really let the equipment fall to its de demise in the stope, rather than try and recover it in this matter. Let the robot die. That's yeah. what it's for. <laughs> Needless to say, the, the vacation student did not return next year. Hopefully he wasn't too traumatized by the incident and retained a healthy sense of safety first and expensive equipment second for any future work. 
Thank you for your podcast. I particularly love the dry and dark humor you bring to the rather depressing subject of engineering disasters. I look forward to seeing a live show should you ever care to visit Australia. We nope. gotta do it. We gotta do it. If Trash Future can do it, we can do it. I'm I'm sad I missed out, so yeah. we gotta go to Australia. Yeah. Thanks again from oh, Woman in Mining. Oh, thanks, thanks so much. much. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. That was Safety Third. Shake hands for danger. Our next episode will be on Chernobyl. Does anyone have any commercials before we go? Subscribe to the YouTube channel. Subscribe oh, yes. to the Patreon, but subscribe, subscribe to the YouTube to, channel. Yeah, subscribe to the YouTube channel. So I want the plaque. my plaque. I want We're going to get the plaque. I also want my plaque. going to get the plaque. You're going to become plaque people. That's right. See, Black's Dad, right. it is a real job. Exactly. Exactly. They gave me a nice certificate saying people enjoy listening to me. <laughs> <laughs> Employee of the month at YouTube. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm calling that an episode. I think right. we did a podcast. Yeah, we did it. Yeah, yeah. It. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye, everyone. Boom.